Hurt World. What happened with Hurt World? Today I'm gonna talk about the past and the current situation of this game and what led to be losing a lot of players through the time. Earthworld was launched as closed alpha the 24th of July 2015, staying in that stage until getting released, still in alpha stage as an early access on Steam in the 4th day of December from the same year. Some of you may know that 2015 was a time for the trend of early access survival games, so December was the perfect timing for giving more people the chance of playing and knowing Earthworld. During the closed alpha period, though, obviously the player base was basically a smaller group of people who were granted access to test the game and provide feedback before it came out on Steam. After appearing on Steam, several things have changed. The peak of players during a part of December playing the game at once has hit the 13,000 players. That obviously could have been happening with other games during the time or something where many people tend to spend some more money with games and grab them during the winter sales. But after December, Hurt World was no longer able to hit the same number of players at once ever again. But there are a few obvious reasons for this to happen to these kinds of games. Why did Hurt World lose half of its player base in just two months after December? By February of 2016, the population was cut in half, and I suppose part of the players who have bought the game in December were simply curious about how the game was, but something has made them losing interest in it after a while. You can clearly see that happening with more early access survival games on Steam as well. Developers know clearly that it is too risky to turn public an unfinished project because during a game development there are ups and downs and there are a few things that may affect negatively what surrounds the game. I've noticed that in two years the Hurt World player base has shrunk even though there were a few months where some players have returned to the game due to certain patches coming out. So what really really happened to Hurt World? Back in the days when Hurt World appeared, there were a ton of other games under the same genre trying to have some success as well. Several months have passed and we find ourselves swimming in an oversaturated market. These games I'm talking about have some aspects in common, but there's something specific that makes each of them different from each other that should be the key to grab these games or to really stay away from them. So back to Hurt World. This game was born in Australia as a project from Bankroll Studios back in 2014, which back in time had only 5 people working on it, and if you read some of their past dev blogs, you will notice a few changes on the team, so some members had to leave and were replaced by others, but the team in numbers stay basically the same. One thing that may happen is, when a game comes out of closed alpha or beta and it's open to everyone who can buy it, more people will come and more people will play it, there will be more feedback and content on the web about the game and so on. When it comes to games where there's a bit of competition, specifically situations of player versus player or as you call it PvP, there will be those players who win or lose fights and simply keep going with their gameplay and try having fun for as long as possible. But then there are those kinds of players who you wish to stay away from unless you are like them. And if there's something that annoys them in the game or someone, they will just start to insult that person on the chat or will go post somewhere in the web how angry they are with that player or how angry they are with that game development or the developers themselves and sometimes they are so angry that they don't even bother with making a constructive critic, a suggestion or a mature opinion about what is unpleasant to them in the game. And that usually results in conflicts between some members of the game community and they fight over the chat, they fight under a post on reddit or someone else and this is kind of a snowball, someone else will do the same and the snowball will turn into a bigger snowball, which ends to create a toxic environment inside of the game community. Of course not everyone is like this, there are people who actually express themselves like they should and even contribute in a positive way to the community and if possible to the development of the game. Others are completely neutral about this, but everyone is the way it is. 
Sadly, a long time ago, Hurt World developers took the decision of abandoning or stop controlling the game's subreddit. They even had a moderator on that subreddit, which we have never seen again. This caused some controversy between the Hurt World community. A few people who agree with their decision of abandoning the subreddit, while others were completely against it. I still wonder why they did not add more roles into that subreddit, together with banning members out of it, if needed instead of abandoning it, since Reddit is a powerful tool for the gaming community. I know it's kind of hard to get used and deal with some kind of people over Reddit, but the developers clearly expressed that what some people were saying and how they were behaving in there wasn't the best thing for their mental health. They basically couldn't handle the, the pressure, maybe, making them staying away from the site, even though I think they would still take a look at some posts in there. Abandoning the subreddit and becoming a little less responsive to the public was good and bad. Good for their mental health, they probably wanted to avoid conflicts coming from angry players to prevent lacking of will to keep developing the game, but bad for the good part of the community who will easily provide feedback to them about something in the game in order to help it grow and fix things in it. Some of the developers still communicate with a smaller amount of people once in a while or make their dev blogs a chance for them to speak to the entire community but without receiving feedback from it directly. Well, I kind of understood why they decided to abandon the subreddit, but on the other hand I was quite disappointed with that decision from them, because it will become hard to communicate between the community without them around. And if you have an issue with the game and want it to post somewhere for them to see, you better do it on the game's team forums instead, because it's more likely that they will read it in there or if you know someone that can communicate directly to the devs, just go ahead and do it. I can say that between Hurt World and Rust community there are no big differences, except for the number of players in each game, of course. But in general, you will find different kinds of players, from friendly and talkative players to other common players that just want to play the game but don't really interact with you much or at all, to people who will be mean with you in any way. Like in other games, I found cool people and not so cool people, that's completely normal, so... When I started to play this game, I didn't have a great impression of it at first, I found it a little boring being there in the bland desert, uh, picking up some logs, until I was tired of running and not being sure of what should I do next. But after a few hours I realized that Hurt World had actually something to do and the game looked in general funny, simple but funny. Uh, I've never thought uh, this game would make me having a blast and make me spending so many hours in it. After a while, I've started making videos of it and met other people in game who some I became friends with. I've met a bunch of people both before and after the game release on Steam, but while in closed alpha, the community seemed to be a little more accessible, but in a certain way because we were a smaller group after all. Meanwhile, I've met a few other YouTubers and streamers while playing the game. Some of you may know them. I've met Shadowfrax, I've met a mid knowing for now playing Fortnite and previously Paragon. He was known before on Hurt World as Tactical Myth. Alex, Shen vs. Machine, and the friendly guy Frankie. And a few more people that uh, I've met in Hurt World. They were really cool people on the time. And when the game came out on Steam, it had its moments of fame, and I kept meeting more people in there, but things have changed in a way. There was more people to deal with in the time, and new strategies to defend our base were coming up, so people would figure out different ways of raid your base or to piss you off, so you had to figure out how to protect better your place, because some things on the game have changed. Through the game dev vlogs, you could see that the developers had big plans to provide more content to the game, while fixing a couple of issues in it. They gave us pictures of concepts from new creatures that could possibly be implemented into the game later. Some of the creatures like the Yeti, the first Shigi, and variations of the original Boar and Tokar were implemented. But some of the other creatures never appeared in the game. 
They've added temporarily some insects, but they removed them after a while in the experimental version of the game. Of course, as the game is still a work in progress, things can change and new ideas can replace old ideas. They stated that nothing they have planned is set in stone after all. Even though sometimes they give me the feeling of being a little lost and not sure which decision they will be taking next. Let's talk about something that was a game changer, which some agree with, others don't. Infamy. Originally, you would drop every of your character's item when you died. Basically, like in other survival game, you lose everything you had with you at the moment if you got killed by something or someone. Unless you were playing certain games like Seven Days to Die or Conan Exiles, where there are custom server settings to change the way things are, like the option to drop only the items in your inventory but not your gear, or to not drop anything at all. But did Hurtworld developers decide to make a new system that would prevent some players from thinking this game as being too grindy? Because the infamy system has nothing to do with what the Steam page says about the game. Hurtworld is a hardcore multiplayer survival FPS with a focus on deep survival progression that doesn't become trivial once you establish some basic needs. Built for hardcore gamers, Hurtworld aims to punish. So infamy should be optional, not something that they add to the game as default. Mostly servers have infamy system on by default, but only a few of them have it disabled. I will explain you the infamy system like you were 5 just in case you never played the game. Infamy is a system that, if you die, it will make you keep your equipped gear, the clothes your character is dressed with, the backpack, the tools and the weapons, to stay with you. In other words, you won't be losing your gear if you die, unless you are infamous. You become infamous if you kill one or more players. If you kill several players in a certain amount of time, you will become an auto. To avoid infamy, you have obviously to avoid killing other players. If you die while being infamous, you will always have a chance of losing one single item of your equipped gear. If you become an outlaw, you will drop all your gear once you die. In both infamy and non-infamy cases, you will always drop the items you hold in the inventory of your backpack. Mostly Hurtworld servers have this infamy system, but there are a few of them with the old full loot drop system, as I've said before, and the one where you drop everything on that. This full loot drop system got gradually less popular. So I believe that after the infamy system was implemented, some players seem to have left the game. Because this system isn't clearly fair in some PvP cases, so basically you win a lot of fights, you kill a lot of people, and it's you that's gonna be punished once you die, because you will lose everything to others. It's not really rewarding to kill a lot of people, or is it really? Well. Though the developers decided to remove this infamy system from the game in the future once the item v2 comes out to the stable version of the game. And what is this item v2 about? Well, it's pretty much a revamped new version of Earthworld. You are able to test this new Earthworld by accessing the experimental version of the game through Steam. There are some experimental servers you can choose to check the new things they've been doing. If they are still working in the game, why there are several players simply mad or bored with the game or with the developers? Well, I'm going to try to explain you this as simple as possible. When a game is being developed, sometimes people who play it for several hours and to do and to experience everything the game has to offer, until it becomes more complete. Through the months, maybe what they've experienced in Hurt World became repetitive, as they were waiting for something new in it. What happened with Hurt World a good time ago was having two different instances of the game. The stable version, which is basically the game itself, in its current state, and the appearance of the experimental version, so basically an experimental game within another experimental game which was implemented with the purpose of letting players have anticipated access to unfinished content of the game before this one got implemented into the stable version, so the players could test the new work-in-progress content and report any bugs or other issues they will find to the developers. 
to prevent adding something too early to the base game that could cause some instability and even turn the game unplayable, temporarily. New weapons, game modes and maps were tested in that version, until this item V2 concept started to get into a solid state, occupying the entire experimental version. They are aiming to make a new looking Hurt World, still with the old base game aspects, but just improved. Among all the new systems they've implemented and removed from the experimental Item V2 version of the game, they've also built a new map, which already suffered changes in the biomes through the time, until it becomes fully functional. Through the time, they've been putting effort into this version and they've added several different things. The game visually looks really more polished. But having these two versions of the game seems to be tearing apart even more the player base. We all know that all these kinds of games can just be done in a couple of months, some will take years to develop depending on many factors, like the amount of people who are working on the development, the budget, the experience of the development team together with their decisions about the game. Hurt World is a game made from scratch, the assets were built by the developers which take longer time to be built than simply buy some from the engine asset store, though the game is taking way too longer than expected to receive the big patch these players are waiting for so long. As the developers decided to work on this new Hurt World version of the game, under the experimental mode, the stable version is lacking of updates since the time they've started dedicating themselves to build item v2, which gives to the players who still play the base game a feeling that the game was abandoned, when in reality it was not. Occasionally they fixed a couple of bugs and exploits happening on the stable version. They just decided to stop working with that stable old version since they will replace it with the new version forever. No one really knows when this new version of the game will be ready to be pushed to the stable version, but it is good already to know that they're still working on it. The worst enemy now is the time. The more time this is taking to happen, the smaller the player base is becoming. No, the game is not dead yet, at least, as they haven't abandoned it and there are still servers up and running and if you carefully sort the servers list in your game, you will still find some people to play with or against in some servers. Of course, things have changed a lot and this is not the same amount of people as before playing on the servers, ok? You will notice a big difference on it. Now only the time will tell if the new version of the game will save it in some way and maybe bring back old players to it. What is your opinion on Hurt World? Do you think it can still succeed someday? Will it recover part of the player base it has lost? Should have the developers create this experimental version to implement item v2 or should they have been implemented item v2 directly into the old stable game feel free to leave a comment down below this video with your thoughts about it thanks a lot for watching see you soon